straight back. For your shoe was coming back, so we lift up at the mighty ghost. Hosanna, hallelujah, Hosanna, hallelujah, prepare the way. All his people make straight a path. For your shoe was coming back, so we lift up at the mighty ghost. Hosanna, hallelujah, Hosanna, hallelujah. Everybody, my name is Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. I'm Eli. And I'm Jason. And this is the Ecclesia. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. Welcome you for all showing up with us tonight, having a little bit of a nighttime, a bedtime story, I guess you will. If it's a little bit before, if you're later in the world, then it's getting closer to night. If you're on the other side, on the west coast, and it's a little brighter. But we thank you guys for joining us. We thank you for spending your time with us, your quality time, your time you have off after work, your time you have off to do whatever you want, but you chose to hang out with us. We thank you guys for joining in with that. Yeah. Thank you guys very, very much. We see our family out there. We definitely see the people we love. Um, Emissary of Elohim, much love to you, little brother. Not a little brother, but big brother, side brother. And Zach Z and uh, Rhiannon and everybody out there. Judith. 
Judith's in there. Who Do we have anyone else? That's it. That's yeah. it. That's all we absolutely need. Much love to you guys out there. Let's do a quick prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for blessing us, giving us another chance at a, a day that you have protected us. You have given us your, your Torah. You have given us your son. You have given us a direction. You have given us life. And Father, we thank you for these blessings. And we thank you for just the joy of knowing you and the joy of knowing your path forward. Father, please bless this little ecclesia that we have here. Please bring us closer to your word, Father. Please bestow wisdom upon us that we are all just full of wisdom, that we understand your ways and that we are willing to obey your commands and that we are your people. Father, we thank you for your son and we thank you for your Torah. We ask us all in the name of Yahushua. Amen. All right. How you guys doing? Good. Good. Everyone good, good out there? Um, Eli, how you doing? Good. Everyone hunky-dory? You guys, uh, any kind of stories, anything at all? Um, no, nothing, nothing crazy. Okay, well, that's pretty boring. Okay, um, um, let us begin, then let's take a quick look. We are in the, uh, we are in um, Sorak, and for those who do not know, Sorak is, what is a little bit of history on Sorak that we know that of this, Kate? So far we know that Sorak is a, is a man written, is by a man written that went down to Egypt, he translated this, he wrote this, um, his name, what was his name? I don't remember his name, but he was the son of Yahushua, another Yahushua. Yeah. The grandson. Yeah, the grandson. Okay, um, yeah, and so this was um, close to, I believe, I mean, this was in a couple of hundred years of Messiah, correct? Do we know? I, I think so. I, I think that's according to the Wikipedia, yeah. um, that is what it says within like a couple hundred years. It was like 120, 130 BC, I think. Okay. Okay, yeah, and so what do we know of... Um, what do we know of this compared to other books? Why isn't this in the scriptures? Um, is there anything different of this that we know of anything else? Or, no, um, it all talks about the same stuff. It sounds a lot like uh, Solomon. It just has a bit of almost a more human tone to it, not a king's tone to it, and more of a person that is actually um, not a royalty, just a person with wisdom. Yeah. Okay. Um, and for those who have never heard this before, our little family is a family out in South America. We are living in the middle of a jungle, and we believe that the what people call the laws of God, or we call them as the laws of Yahuwah, we believe that they are ordained for all time. We believe that they are the greatest things that you will ever encounter in your life. And when I say the Torah, I'm talking about Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And inside of those books, we have about 150, 160 commands that we can keep today that are specifically for all of us today. And they are commandments that when we learn to fall in love with them and learn to keep them really close to our heart, they will enhance our life as we will start to understand the heart, mind, and soul of our creator and his wishes for us. And if we take the laws, statutes, and commands of our creator and we have nailed them to a cross, then we will never get the heart of our creator and we will never understand what his true mind is. And our Messiah, Yahushua, talks a lot about the Torah and he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And the commandments that he's speaking of are the commandments of his father. And you will never find them anywhere else unless you keep this Torah. And so as we do this lesson tonight and for those who listen to this in the future, the Torah is the greatest set of words you will ever read. It is the greatest promises that you will ever find and I encourage everybody to take a copy of the Torah and, and read it. Read it as a love letter to our, from our creator to you that it will be the greatest things that you will ever have if you will apply them to your lives. Okay, let us get ready and let us get into this. Chapter 4, verse 1 of Sorak, Ecclesiasticus. And my son, do not rob the poor of his living and do not allow the needy eyes to wait long. Do not make a hungry being sorrowful, neither provoke a man in his distress. Okay, what are we talking about right here, guys? Uh, We're talking about uh, a poor person. You're a poor person. It's like, don't take everything you have, right? They have nothing left. Why would you take what left they have? Yeah, and needy eyes. What are needy eyes? What would we say what needy eyes are? Needy eyes are someone that needs something, and if they need it, and you're like, oh, I'll give it to you in a week, or you just make them wait long and say, oh, I'll think about it or something, when it's, it's really needed, right? And needy eyes is someone that needs something. It's a poor person that needs food, that needs shelter, that needs some form of clothing because it's cold, whatever it is. It could be a Bible, and if, you, if they're looking for the word of the Creator, and 
you tell them no and you don't deem them worthy of the Bible, that's also making the needy wait long. Yeah, absolutely. And the needy and the hungry and the people, what do we know about the hurt people that the cries of the hurt, what does what our creator promise or what, is, what do we know that he, he does for the broken, the weak, the distraught? He hears their cries. He takes vengeance upon those that hurt the poor, the wicked. He hurts those people that hurt the other people. He says you will be judged in the same way. And the poor person you just refuse to look at, you refuse to help, you will be that person and someone will do the exact same to you. And it says, do not make a hungry being sorrowful, uh, neither provoke a man in his distress. So when someone's already down, why would you kick them when they're down? You don't kick someone when they're down, you help them up. You don't want to push them down farther when they're already distressed or they're hungry. You want to get them food and build them back up so that they are not down. Yeah, and you know, that's, that's a lot of things that, you know, most people will not come to you and ask you for help unless they absolutely need help. And in the time of help is the time that people are most receptive to the word of our creator. And so if we are those people that are take, robbing the poor or that we are, um, we, somebody needs something and we, we just are too greedy to give it to them or that somebody's hungry or somebody's already broken and we, um, we add to this, there's no way they're ever going to be receptive to the word of our creator, right? If you do not help them in their distress, when they're not distressed, they will look at you and they will know that you were not there to help them. And the signs of our creator are people that care. It's, it's about a heart that loves everybody. It's about a heart that is about taking care of the poor, the orphans, widows, those kind of things. Those are our people that we need to love with everything. Okay, continue on. Do not, okay, so do not add more trouble to a heart that is tortured. And do not delay to give to he who is in need. Okay, that's very, that's kind of a, um, an interesting thing. And, um, you know, I, I, that's something that a lot of people will have a ton of regrets in their lives. And I just recently today, I actually heard a story about that, which I'm not going to get into because she asked me not to, to talk about it. But it was about a gal who um, she had the opportunity to help a homeless guy and things turned bad and he ended up killing himself. And I could tell by her email that she was broken inside and there were a tremendous amount of questions. And it's things like this that, you know, it you can't blame her for it, but by default, we can always wonder if we had done something different, how it would have been. And these are things in our lives that we, we won't maybe have another chance to do that. And so if somebody has a broken heart and um, somebody who's in need, we need to open up our pockets right now. We need to do whatever it is to take care of them. And we can't, we can't delay because if there is a delay, there's always a chance that we will never ever have another chance to help those in need. And so the, the people that are in need is timing specific and that timing is when they're asking and that's when we need to get, take care of them okay neither turn away your face from a poor man okay hold on i missed that four do not reject the supplication of the afflicted neither turn away your face from a poor man do not turn your eye from the needy and give him no occasion to curse you for if he curses you in the bitterness of his being his prayer shall be heard by he who made him. Okay, S something to, to consider, right? It, you know, it, this is this correct? If somebody who's down on their, what they say, down on their luck or somebody that's broken and you don't help them, what do you think they're going to feel about you? Um, they're probably going to be really upset with you. Like they, they saw that you had something and you refused to help them with that thing you had, with whatever, whatever it was, and you had the opportunity to help them, you didn't, they're probably not going to be very happy with you. And be like, they're going to be like, Yahoo, why did these people not help me? They had the opportunity, they had what I needed, and they refused to help me. Yeah, and it clearly says, his prayer shall be heard by he who made him. And that's what we don't want to do, is we do not want to get on the bad side of our creator. There's a lot of things we can do in this world that are bad, but getting on the wrong side of our creator is very bad bad in fact it's just a, a very very bad thing there's no reason to do it why would we ever want to upset the creator of the universe and possibly cause him to give us wrath 
And you, if we don't take care of the needy and the poor and the broken and those who need it, we're going to get hurt. The grand is here. Hi. And Hi, Grandma. she says, we need feet that run swiftly to meet needs. That person's story could be mine. Y yeah. And, you know, that was, that, that was, I didn't know what to say to that gal. And I've been in those situations before. Um, there was a situation when I was in school that I was, they, 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 for whatever reason, they put me in this group called um, Natural Helpers. And it was just, I was just this short little fat kid. Nobody, I was, I, nobody liked me. I was kind of my own self, but somehow some of the kids decided that, that I was somebody they would want to talk to in the event of a very troubled situation. And it was very odd because I was in the um, seventh and eighth grade and there was a, a girl that was having a lot of problems. And I was talking to her for a while. And one time she went home at lunch and she killed herself. And um, the school, everybody was just completely um, broken. And you know that was one of those things that I will carry with myself for a very long time. What if I could have helped her more? What if I could, you know, there, there's just so many things to do. So when, like the, the grandma says, Grand says, when people need help, we must run swiftly to them because when we need that help, when we don't have people running swiftly to us, we understand how lonely it is. Okay, continue on here. Seven, earn for yourself the love of the assembly and bow your head to a great man. Let it not grieve you to bend your ear to the poor and give him a friendly answer with meekness. Okay, what are, what is, what are we talking about here with earn for yourself the love of the assembly and bow your head to a great man? Any thoughts on this? I think it's just humble yourself before the people, right? You don't, you don't need, when you go into a new place, you're not, you're not gonna wanna go in there and be like, I'm high and mighty, I'm better than you, I have all this. If this is a congregation that is full of people that are not as like you're, you're say you're a rich person right you have lots of money and these people are are poor right and this is a congregation that just loves you on but you have money you don't want to come in there and you don't want to say how great you are you want to humble yourself before them you want to be as them you want to be with them so that, they, that they you earn their respect you won't want to push people away because you're rich and you're a snob person yeah i, I that could that could definitely be one um you know bowing your head to a great man i mean there's there's always there's always a sign of respect and you know usually Men are, or, or what they consider stature, are older people, and, and I see that as, as one thing. And also, a great man is like you're you're good at something, right? But there's always someone better than you. You never want to get like a a haughty spirit and say think you're the greatest at anything you do. Jay, do you got anything else on that? Um, I wanted to say that I think it's the poor person who says being like assembly. I think you talk about poor people because then the next part you talk about bowing your ear down to them, like like going down to the getting on their level. Like when they're sitting down and ask that little cup of money and say, "Please give me money." You bow down. You get next to them. Hmm. You, you like you like sit down there. You talk to them. You get on their level, eye to eye with them. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. The grand says, like the rich man in Lazarus, and then emissary Elohim said, never delay to speak up and shine light. It could be the only time that they will get to receive the truth in the world that is mostly brief of it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, eight. Let it not grieve you to bend your ear to the poor, and give him a friendly answer with meekness. Okay, um, I mean, this is very good stuff. I mean, bending your ear to the poor, what, is, what, do, what does it mean, bending I, your ear to the poor? I think like I said, it's getting down to their level, like getting down eye to eye with them. Or so, maybe listening to them. Yeah, listening to them. So that's what they say, hey, bend your ear this way. Um, it's listening to the ear of the poor. And I, I guess it's something, I guess the world we live in is that if your people are poor, they don't want to listen to the poor or anything else. And, you know, that's, that's the thing. That's, that's, you never know when you're going to walk by a messenger. You never know when that person holding the help me sign with a little cup is a messenger in disguise. And, and you never know when you're missing a test by not bending your air to the poor. And it's about giving him a friendly answer with meekness, right? Put them on your same level. Give them respect. Give them love. They don't mean to be poor. They, they, they didn't choose this way of life. And if, if somebody had an, an option of being poor or not, they would not. Most people would not take that option. Okay, nine, deliver he who suffers wrong from the hand of the oppressor and do not be faint hearted when you sit in judgment. Um, okay, thoughts? Um, don't, don't deliver up people that, or deliver people that do wrong from the hand of the oppressor. It's, 
It says, deliver he who suffers wrong from the hand of the oppressor. Deliver him. Like, take him out of there. Take him out of the situation. If you see someone getting abused by their master, right? This is like, it went back in the day when they had servants. You were supposed to go save that servant. That's according to the Torah. You're not supposed to put them back. If they seek refuge with you, you're going to protect them. You're going to care for them. You're going to treat them as family until you can figure out where to where to go with them. Yeah, and I would say that is the same for anybody out there. It's not just a, a mess. If you see somebody in trouble, you need to help them, right? That's just what we do. The people of our creator are built in a different fashion. We're built to love our neighbor. We're built to give. We're built to just we're different. We have to be different to be on this kingdom road. And so when you see, and this is, this is something that boss clan gets in a lot of trouble for. We ended up getting our house raided by the police a year and a half ago, right? We were taking a child who had been molested and passed around for child trafficking. And we went in, we busted them out of a group of a hundred Christians. We got into a lot of trouble. We got, we fought them all and ended up getting our house raided over false accusation because we stood up for a child. We've been in trouble before, but that is what we need to do. And we all should be like that. We should never ever um, allow somebody who is bullied to be bullied by that person. If you have the capabilities of freeing somebody, right? Don't leave somebody in that, that position. Okay. Sorry, stand up for the lowly. Absolutely. Yeah, you're right. Emissary. Yes. Yeah, stand up for the lowly. Stand up for those who are, are broken. Stand up for the women. I mean, all of it. The grand, the still small voice. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Ten, 10. Be as a father to the fatherless and like a husband to their mother. Continue on up here. Hold on. So you shall be as the bin of the most high and he shall love you more than your mother does. Okay, so this is interesting, right? This is um, this talks about who? Who is this talking about? This talking about the fatherless and the widows. And who? And he says that you shall be as the bin of the Most High. Right. If you do that, you are like you are the son of the Most High. Yeah, son of the Most son High. Son or daughter. So, what are the qualifications of the people that are on the Kingdom Road? Uh, well, those people that are keeping the Torah and the faith in Hamashiach, but it's also the people that are doing good to those who need the good done to them. Yeah, meekness, humbleness. The, the self-control, um, all of these kind of things. The, the kingdom of heaven is going to be made up of probably quieter people, I would say. Um, but that's probably not true. I know Emissary of Elohim will make it, so he's probably a little loud up there. <laughs> Just kidding, brother. Okay, here we go. Um, so what's it say? And he shall love you more than your mother does. Wisdom exalts her children and lays hold of those who seek her. He who loves her, Kai which is life, and those who seek her early shall be filled with joy. What are we talking about, gentlemen? Uh, it's about finding wisdom. He basically said, when you find wisdom and you search for wisdom, you love life. If you want, because you're trying to save your life, you're trying to save your soul. So when you want to find this wisdom, you are saving yourself when you look for wisdom. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And wisdom is one of those things that we are, it's one of the things in the Bible, that one of the things that we know that we can pray for that we will get if we pray for it and we seek it and we ask for it. And so that should always be in our prayers that we are asking our creator to bestow the spirit of wisdom upon us that we are able to see things that, that others are not. Okay, let's continue on. Um, and those who seek her early shall be filled with joy. He who holds her fast shall inherit esteem. And whenever she enters, Yahuwah shall baruch. Those who serve her, so who serve her, serve the Kodesh one. And those who love her, Yahuwah loves. Okay, why, why does Yahuwah love those who love wisdom? Because if you're loving wisdom, you're going to be following the Torah. You're going to be doing obedience. You're going to be wise in the Torah. You're going to be walking in the path. And that is the beginning of wisdom. And that is the beginning of learning about Yahuwah is going to be learning this Bible, learning the book that sits before you, learning the scriptures that were written out for us. And that's how he would love us because we're, we're investing our time into him, right? We're proving to him that we are dedicated to him, that we are dedicated to learning about him. We're dedicated to learning what he wants from us. Yeah, and we're walking out the Shema. We're writing the, the law, statutes, and commands upon our heart, mind, and soul and everything. And, and when we are doing that, that will bring in wisdom but you will never find a wise person who has forsaken the Torah. You, you will find knowledgeable men, but you will never find wise men. 
What you got? Mr. Emissary Villahim, when you said that he was loud, he said, lol, he shouts the Shema. He has the guy yelling Shema. <laughs> and then he says, cry aloud and spare not. In the gates of the righteous, there is praise. Absolutely. Okay. Um, 15. 15. Whoever gives ear to her shall judge the nations. And he who attends to her shall dwell securely. If a man commits himself to her, he shall inherit her. And his generation shall hold her in possession. What does it mean, guys? If a man commits to her, how does a man commit to wisdom? What, do you, uh, what are we saying? By speaking wisdom, by going to get wiser, by following the Torah and obeying what Yahuwah tells him. I would say you would commit to wisdom by keeping the law, statutes, and commands. Right? That is how you would commit to being wise. If you decide that the law, statutes, and commands are not good for you, you will never find the wisdom and she will never walk with you and you will never inherit her and it's just not going to be a good life. Okay, 17. For at first she shall walk by him in crooked ways and bring fear and dread upon him and punish him with her discipline until she may trust his being and try him in, by her laws. Okay, um, what, is he, what do you think that he means by at first she will walk by him in crooked ways? It's like... When you first get a Torah, it's not easy, right? You lose your friends, you lose your family, you lose a lot of people around you, and it's it's a trying road, right? Do you want to give up bacon? Do you want to give up your family? Do you want to give up everything in the world for this walk? And it's gonna you're gonna try. You're gonna go down these hard roads. You're gonna have to give up things that you wouldn't want to give up, right? The world can't give up their bacon. The world can't give up their NFL. They can't give up the things that they love, right? They can't give up the world. But when you walk in a Torah, you have to give it up, and that's a hard road. That's a hard decision to make. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I see it as a little different on this. Because, it's, it, again, it says, For at first she shall walk by him in crooked ways and bring fear and dread upon him. And I would have to say that as we, and my, Nicole and I, we, we grew up in Babylon. We, we are Babylonians by trade. We're, we came out of North America. Before we knew the Torah, we were the, we were the greatest Gentiles of all times. And so we had our bacon. We had our HBO. We had our evil shows. We had all this keep, crazy stuff. And there was always that nagging feeling. There was always something that's like, this isn't right. There's, there's got to be something more. And when you have something that's bringing fear and dread upon them, and then we are punished and we are disciplined, bringing us under their laws, that is where the power of wisdom and the power of Yah are, are interchangeably working with us and working amongst us. And so that, that's what I see. Jay, do you see anything else on this? I think you have that. Anyone else? No. You like it with me? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. 18. Then she shall return to the straight way and comfort him and show him her secrets. But if he goes wrong, she shall forsake him and give him over to his own ruin. Watch for opportunity and beware of evil. And do not be ashamed when it concerns your being. Okay. Let's touch on this. Watch for opportunity and beware of evil. What opportunity do you guys just say? Watch out for watch for opportunity. You have to observe the opportunity. Okay. So and beware of evil. What is evil? What is classified as evil? How do we know anything against the Torah? Anything that goes against the laws, statutes, and commands of our Creator is evil. That's called iniquity. It is also called sin. We would never know what sin is unless we have the Torah. Now that we know what sin is, this is where we must. And watch for this opportunity, but if you are not in the Torah, when the opportunity comes, you're not going to know to be aware of evil. You're going to get into it because you do not have a foundation of strength, and the Torah is a foundation of strength. Okay, 21. Hold on. What you got? Emissary says, like with David, along with many others, when they didn't wait on Yahuwah and come to him and ask which way you should go and what you should do, even though you had, the, had a triumph before you. Yeah, there's many circumstances where um, every we we go our own way, and you know that is a Torah commandment. One of them is is do not do what is right in your own eyes, and the other Torah commandment is do what is right in the eyes of Yahuwah. The eyes of Yahuwah seek the Torah only, and when we are outside of that, it's not it's not going to be good. And when we are not asking our Creator for the direction that we're going. Then we're going to get we're going to run into roadblocks. We are going to run run into things because everything needs to be about the will of our Creator. And when we're praying, a lot of people 
get sidetracked and get messed up because they don't think their prayers are getting answered, but it's not in the will of our creator. The will of our creator is the most important thing ever. And so we have to be where he's going with that. Okay, anything else on that? He just said almost the same thing you did. Um, we can't just go, oh, well, we did this before. We must ask for our next step. Yeah, absolutely. If Yahuwah yeah. isn't ordering your path, you may lose battles. Absolutely. Yeah, and, you know, we had that before as well when um, they were coming up. Remember they came out? It Was it Joshua? Joshua was with them. They decided to run up the mountains, and everybody in the mountains killed them all. And then they Yeah, so this is right after, uh, this is right in, uh, I think it's Numbers. Right, yeah, right in Numbers. And Joshua and Caleb and all the, and the other, what is it? The ten? Nine? There's nine? There's all of them. Yeah. Uh, I don't think Levi went. There's a trial. Wait, wait. What about the time Moshe? I think it happened with this, Moshe. This is the one. Yeah, this, this is where one. the numbers. And they, were, okay. they went out to spy the land, and then they came back and were like all scared of the giants. They were like, the giants are there. They're in the land. We can't do it. And then you was like, all right, you guys don't have faith in me. You're not going to go in the land for 40 years, right? Only J uh, Joshua Caleb and Caleb. Joshua. Right. And then they just like, right, fine, we'll just go find them ourselves and prove our faith. And they all got, they all got wiped Nihilated. off the they Yeah, yeah wiped they got off the pushed back down the mountain. mountain. Yep. Okay, anything else there, Mr. No. Cole? Okay. Okay, for there is shame that brings sin, and there is shame which is esteem and favor. Thoughts on this? What does it mean by this? For there is shame that brings sin, and there is shame which is esteem and favor. What's I your think, guys' I think I said the exact same thing. I think it's when you get shamed for the kingdom and when you get shamed for the world. There's two different things. So what does this mean? For there is shame that brings sin. I think maybe like the pressuring the outside of the world, the peer pressure of the world, or like the shame of like, you're, you've done something wrong, and now you're going to go sin or something. You're going to try and make up for it, and you do something sinful and, and try and make up for it. So I see this as when they had a chance to teach the Word, and they didn't because they were too ashamed of what they believed in. Yeah. yeah I mean, they, it, it talks about their shame, which is esteem and favor. So I guess my take on that would be there is um, sometimes you're going to get owned and shamed in this life, and it's how you deal with this how you stand which is either going to bring esteem to our creator and favor or what you do with that shame that you bring yourself down to some sort of sin that's the best i think i got anyone else on this okay 22 do not show partiality against your being and do not let the fear of any man cause you to fall okay um what is your does your say do not show partiality uh, accept no person against thy soul and let not the reverence of any man cause you to fall. I think this is a, uh, don't let someone in your life take you off the narrow path. Don't let, like, don't let someone, just because you're a friend yeah. of theirs or something, don't let them hurt your soul, right? Your soul's most most important. And if they are leading you astray, trying to get you to worship other Elohim or trying to do something that is in sin, you have to say no. Yeah, yeah, no, and that that is, I think you're exactly right on that. Um, if you, a lot of times people will look up to a certain person and that person is completely worldly and you will start emulating that worldly side and um you you you've let your standards fall for that okay 23 and do not refrain to speak when there is occasion to do good and do not hide your wisdom in her loveliness for by speech wisdom shall be known and learning by the word of the tongue by no means speak against the truth but be ashamed of the strain of your ignorance. Okay, what is he saying? So basically, he starts off by saying, don't let yourself not speak when it needs to be said. When something needs to be said, when you need to stand up for someone, don't hide those words. Don't don't, don't stay quiet in moments that need to be spoken up for, especially if some, you see something happening and you can stand up for the person. Uh, the truth is capital, so you need to speak talking about the Torah. Don't go against the Torah. In no wise, and so basically in no way, shape, or form, speak against the truth, which could be the Torah, right? It definitely could. I, that is and probably what that is. Um, yeah, so yeah, and, and I mean, that's that's every day. I mean, the people are very, very ashamed of the Torah and very ashamed of, of Yah and ashamed of Messiah, Yahushua. Don't be ashamed. Okay. Um, and also, you know, by no means speak against the truth. The, that's I, I will lead that into what I would say I am doing with the Hallelujah Scriptures. Um, I'm not going to allow them to lie anymore, and I am going to speak for the truth. I'm not going to speak against their lies. And so that's one thing that we will always do is we were not we are not going to bow to any of this, and it's it's going to be Yah's way or no way. 
Okay, 26. Emissary says, seek to understand before seeking to be understood. Thinking you understand, don't speak presumptuously against it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, 26. Do not be ashamed to confess your sins and do not force the course of the river. Okay, um, we know that you cannot, um, I guess you could force a course of a river or trip to, but I, he, sounds, he says it's probably not a good idea. You know what he's talking about, the course of a river? Uh, he's trying to say, do not uh, force things to happen, right? Do not go against on your own merit, on your own will to do things. You need to put this, your problems in the hands of God. And if you go to try and take your own problems and force this, force this outcome to happen without consulting Yah, I think it's going to go wrong. Why would people be ashamed to confess sins? Um, uh, because they've done evil and they don't want people to know what they've done. They don't. Uh, they want to keep it themselves because they're ashamed of what they've done. Could be. Okay. Um, 27. Do not make yourself a servant to a foolish man. Neither show partiality to the mighty. Strive for the truth unto death, and Yahuwah shall fight for you. Do not be hasty with your tongue, or slack and negligent in your deeds. Do not be as a lion in your house, nor wroth among your servants. Do not let your hand be stretched out to receive and closed when you should repay. Okay, there's a lot of stuff in that, that bottom part. Let's take a, a quick look at that. Um, do not make yourself a servant to a foolish man, neither show partiality to the mighty. What does this mean right here? Uh, if you make yourself a servant to the foolish, right, you're just adding more foolishness. If you put into someone that has no understanding, no no idea, no wisdom, and you say, oh, I will work for you, I'll be your servant, or something and so on like that, you're only causing more problems for yourself because it will drive you to the point of possibly death. Well, yeah, and I mean, you don't want to be working for a foolish boss. It is a bad deal because they can literally, the, the, you could lose your life by negligent actions of them where they're just, they're, they're not right for, for leading. Okay, when it says strive for truth unto death and Yahuwah shall fight for you, that's a huge thing, right? And again, I will take that back to the Hallelujah Scriptures. We are, I am striving for truth unto death. And I believe without a shadow of a doubt that Yahuwah is fighting this fight and he does want this exposed. So we need to stay in truth. We need to, it doesn't matter what it is. There's no such thing as half truths. It's either a lie or it's the truth. And you can wash something just a little bit and it's still a lie and it's still breaking commandments. And so we must be honest in everything we do. We cannot be liars. We cannot be deceivers. We cannot be those kind of people if we want to find the kingdom. Okay, last thing here. Do not be hasty with your tongue or slack and negligent in your deeds. Okay, hasty with your tongue. What is this talking about, gentlemen? Uh, don't be fast to speak. We speak in moments that you have to defend yourself or a moment that there is conflict between you or something else and you speak quickly it can only lead to more problems because your mind is not clear you're just speaking you're quick to speak and it shows no wisdom yeah or slack and negligent in your deeds what does this mean gentlemen it means being lazy right it means Don't if, you're, be lazy. if you're slack in your deeds you're not doing your complete job and <clears throat> what is even, it even if you are working for a man or you're working for someone you're still proving yourself yeah y'all wants diligent workers he's good this is the testing rounds right are you diligent he doesn't want someone to go out on the battlefield and be like eh, i'll do it whenever right he doesn't want the next kingdom and see someone that's lazy on the battlefield yeah and that's our first commandment right be fruitful that is our very first commandment that we have in the scriptures is to be fruitful and being lazy does not break this com it breaks the commandment it is really what it does okay now where it says do not be as a lion in your house what do you suppose that means that means don't hunt your family members down if yeah. you're a lion you're hiding in the bush you're hunting them down you're stalking your prey right that's what lions do you want to be as a herd a full herd right a herd of cows they all flock together they don't sit there and they don't hunt each other down. they don't kill each other but cows don't they take their horns and start hitting each other I think yeah they're playing I don't uh, think they're playing, it's, 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 it's a dominant thing, but... Um, That's not playing. Lions, <laughs> this is an example for this, right? Herds of sheep and stuff, herds of animals, they flock together, right? They all walk together, they eat together, they stay together, and things like that. They're not trying to kill each other. Yeah, yeah, but they do still. Animals they, still do that. They, they show but, who's in charge. No, that, that's exactly right. Don't be a lion in your house. Don't destroy all everybody as prey, and don't be evil to your servants. Now, last final thing. It says, do not let your hand be stretched out to receive 
and closed when you repay. So it's basically saying don't take, not give. You need to be able really to receive and give. Yeah, absolutely. And this goes to, you know, this is the theme of this chapter is that we need to love those who need help. We need to take care of those who are not able to take care of themselves. And we need to rush quickly, as the grand said, to those who need help. There may not be a second chance for us. The people that need help, they may only have one last moment of, of you know, where they need somebody that can help them and you may be the last hope they have. And so, um, I guess this is it. Um, yeah, anything else? Um, much love to everybody out there. How is um, the chat room, Miss Nicole? Tess showed up, so hi, Tess. Hi, I don't Tess. know if Cindy and Ollie and Abby are there or not, but yep. at least hi to all of them. Much love to Ollie, Abby, and the whole family for sure. And um, I think we're good. I'm sorry, I just said let them glean your fruit. Absolutely. Absolutely. Be more like Abraham. Yes. Okay, well, thank you guys. Much love to everybody out there. We love you. We truly do. Thank you to everybody now and in the future that listens to this. And I guess our advice is for everybody is um, read your Torah. Seek our creator where he is able to be found. The coolest kids on the block are those who are keeping the Torah. The coolest kids in the kingdom to come are those who have kept the Torah and the faith of Messiah Yahushua. So, guys, we'll leave it at that. We hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the week. We will see you guys live next time on Shabbat. And you will see us tomorrow morning for our, we're going over the commandments, the Torah commandments again with another section that we are doing. We hope to see you guys there. And we love you guys very, very much, all of you. Um, anything else? Zach Z, Rhiannon, Damon, if you're there, Tess, um, Judith, much love to you guys. And I guess we will sign off. All right. All right. Shalom. 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 Much love, everybody.